Clee was a brave girl today. Yes. I'm afraid that I have another task that requires your assistance. The Adventurer's Guild has recently received a commission directly from the Tenryo Commission. The assignment is both urgent and dangerous. After assessing the assignment, the Guild has concluded that seasoned adventurers are required. Naturally, you came to mind. <laughs> Just another day on the job for us! Allow me to explain. The Tenryo Commission recently issued an arrest warrant for a young Oni by the name of Arataki Ito. An Oni? You mean those big, tough-looking guys with horns on their heads? That's correct. This particular Oni is quite vocal and audacious, so he already has quite the reputation on the streets. That said, he has never been caught up in major trouble of any kind. So it came as a surprise to learn that he has recently been accused of stealing things and sometimes even whisking away the people themselves. But it doesn't end there. When the Tenryo Commission dispatched a Doshin to apprehend him, he assaulted the Doshin before making a getaway with his accomplices. So let Paimon guess. It's up to us to bring the Sony in! No problemo! This does sound like a job for the Traveler! He'll be back with that Oni in no time! I have complete confidence you will succeed. However, please exercise caution. This Oni also happens to hold a vision, and is the leader of an organization known as the Arataki Gang. <laughs> On second thought, Paimon will leave the fighting to you. The last place Paimon wants to be is in a gang fight. We are still investigating Arataki Ito's potential motives behind these incidents, as well as his current whereabouts. But please ask around in the streets as well. There will likely be others more familiar with Ito's circumstances than I am, who can provide you with useful information. Thank you. I will await your return. Ad Astra Avisosk. Well, let's start asking around on the streets. Hopefully we'll learn a little more about this Arataki Ito guy and figure out where he might have run off to. Arataki Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is, he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? No, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. But on the other hand, he's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy, but I guess I wouldn't put it past him to get all riled up and lose control. Hmm, you know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. Is it just Paimon, or is this Ito fellow starting to sound pretty weird? 
I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Taki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? How can you be so sure? Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant... He literally doesn't have what it takes. Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> On purpose, though, right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I'm unbeatable! And so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is... Is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really going to be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? Huh. He doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info! We'll keep asking around! Arataki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurer's Guild. Catherine says that Arataki Ito hasn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity, but for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him. At first, he was just one of our suspects, but when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives, it's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. 
At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The vision hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable, just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info! Hmm. Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. Haima remembers that there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there! Hello! We'd like to ask some questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure, I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first, do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much Moro are we talking about here? A one-off payment of 397,000 Moro, up front. Plus, a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa! That's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The Crimson Oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The Blue Oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an Oni. The Crimson Oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. So the Blue Oni said to the Crimson Oni, Aka! I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the Crimson Oni chased the Blue Oni away. The Crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me, or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. Huh? That's it? What about the little blue Oni? Whatever happened to him? I suppose the blue Oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson Oni remain now. Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the Crimson Oni. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. 
Every generation of Oni inherits these traits. So while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? But how could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question. If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Okay, but what's up with people throwing beans at Oni? What use is that? Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Ah, uh, it's fine. He's the bad guy, remember? It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to Yashiori Island and start looking for Ito! this way. Perfect. Let's try the beans Detective Sango gave us. It'll save a lot of hassle if we can avoid a fight. Uh, 
d don't don't be alarmed. It's just my uh, uh my allergies acting up. I've got it under control. It's all right. I got this. I just 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 just, just gotta tough it out. <laughs> just, I just I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I gotta catch my breath here. Whatever it is you want, it's gonna have to wait. I need a moment. <sighs> need a moment. <sighs> Woo, that's that's better. That sure took a lot out of me, though. <laughs> Hey, why'd you have to be so mean, huh? Surprise attacking me like that. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 take it easy. Just, just stop with the beans, okay? So you're here to bring me in. How in the world did you find me all the way out here anyway? <laughs> well, whatever. If you think I'm going back with you, you can forget it. I'd walk away if I were you. I pack a mean punch, you know. I don't want to hurt any regular folks like you. That's pretty big talk considering all the beans we have. Yep, that's right. Me. All by myself. Nobody else. As boss of the Arataki gang, I gotta nab a little food and drink when we're running low. That's only natural, right? Yeah, but nabbing people? Taking it a bit far, don't you think? Uh, not when their families will pay good mora to see them again. Easy pickings. And the extra mora means I can, uh, uh, give some to my gang to spend on themselves. <laughs> hey, what's with all the questions? Like I said, I'm not going back with you, so stop wasting everybody's time. No way, mister. We've accepted a commission to bring you back. What did you say, little one? Go on, say it to my face. Uh, well, well, mostly he took a commission to bring you back. Looks like you aren't gonna let this drop. In that case, we... Uncle Ito! Uh, don't run now. Careful or you'll fall. What's taking you so long? You said we were gonna have a beetle fight today. Come on, you promised. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Still going ahead, but y but you see, uh, I I've been out here for ages, and I still can't find a beetle that I like. So, just give Uncle Ito a little more time, okay? Huh? Who are they? Are they your friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I told them not to come, but what can I say? They were just too worried about me. <laughs> it's because of a little thing called, uh, prestige. Yeah, because of all the prestige Uncle Ito has. Huh? What are you talking about? We... Come on, just play along. Leave the kid out of this. Uh, Uncle Ito, you don't look so good. You look like you're about to fall over. <laughs> That's because Uncle Ito bumped his noggin on a tree branch while looking for a beetle. Uh-oh! <laughs> it's all good, though. These horns are rock solid. Okay, if you say so. Granny and I will keep heading back now. Don't be too long. Uh, yep, I'll be right there. Hope you're ready to lose today. Who were those people? The old lady was Granny Oni. She's the one who took me in and raised me. And the kid's name is Daisuke. I, I took him in just a while back. They're both like family to me. They escaped with me out this way, along with my boys from the Arataki gang. If I didn't bring them with me, the Tenryo Commission would be knocking on their doors for sure. Right. But if you care about them so much, then you shouldn't have done all that stuff that made them worry about you in the first place. I... Uh, listen, how about we make a deal? You two let me go wrap things up with Daisuke, and once we're done battling beetles, the two of us will settle things with a duel. If you win, I'll come quietly. You can take me back to Inazuma City, and you won't hear a peep out of me. Why? Because I'm an Oni of my word. I'll just tell little Daisuke that my friends and I need to step outside for a moment. That way you won't worry. Cool? Hmm. What should we do? 
There is the kid to consider. Oh, it's on! I like your style. <laughs> All right, but first things first. I need to find an Oni Kabuto to battle with. I've been looking here for ages and haven't found myself a winner yet, so it's time to try somewhere else. Come with me. Saves you worrying that I might skedaddle. By the way, Paimon's curious. What kind of game is beetle fighting? You guys have seen Oni Kabuto out in the wild, right? Even though they might look menacing on the outside, they're big softies on the inside. Most of the time, they're just sitting there doing nothing. But let me tell ya, once the Oni Kabuto start fighting, ho ho ho, they won't let anything get in their way. The grand game of beetle fighting is a match where your beetle tries to flip the other beetle onto its back. Hey, it's not just some kid's game, okay? There's way more to it than that. I have taken part in more beetle fights than you would believe. At least 800. I may have even crossed the thousand mark by this point. Anyway, after a while, you can tell a beetle's fighting potential just by looking at its shape, size, and the patterns on its body. But it's not just about all the physical stuff. Oh no, your Oni Kabuto's gotta be in the right head space as well. If it's not up for a fight or doesn't have the guts, ooh, then it's game over. <laughs> Boy, are you too lucky you ran into me. When it comes to beetles, I'm the expert that the experts go to. I'll show you all you need to know. But we're not the ones that we'll be playing. We're just here to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, not a problem. You two might think I'm just tooting my own horns here, but just you wait. I'll make you a beetle expert in no time. And by the way, that kid has one tough beetle. We can't underestimate it. We have to find a real lean, mean beetle warrior. Okay, so he's not the sharpest horn on the Oni. Okay, let me see. Mm. Ah, there. Let's head to that hill. I'll bet my bottom mora we're gonna find some major league Oni Kabuto hiding out there. I'm... Ah, just our luck. Well, hopefully that'll scare all the we Oh, darn it, they're all gone. Let's hop down from here and take a look. My gut's telling me that there's a king-size beetle just below. <gasps> look, you see all those purple things? It's a whole pile of Oni Kabuto. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Huh? Oh, what the... Ah, oh, no, not lavender melons. Yeah. <clears throat> well, even a pro like myself can make a mistake from time to time. It's okay, just gotta roll with the punches. Let's try somewhere else. This is the one, this is the one! <laughs> See? As long as you're in my company, you're guaranteed to find yourself an Oni Kabuto. on the smaller side, but uh, size isn't everything in a beetle fight. Just let the expert explain, okay? What smaller beetles lack in strength, they make up for in agility. They usually got a whole bunch of sick moves just ready to whip out when the right moment comes. Listen, you can never see a beetle's true energy until it's in the ring. It might look a bit young and docile, but that's got its advantages. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Young beetles that have never fought before always go all out in their first fight. <laughs> Older beetles that have already been through the wars tend to just cower in the corner the moment they see a strong opponent. Hey, didn't I say not to worry? Come on, just have a little faith, would ya? My experience is telling me that this Oni Kabuto was spawned to be a champion! Then Paimon wants in! It's 
not like we have anything else to do. When you hopped down, Paimon flew off somewhere else nearby and found this one. What do you think, Ito? It's big and strong and looks like a real fighter. It matches everything you said about a good fighter beetle. But the one you guys found must be way, way bigger. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got some experience catching beetles too, huh? Nope. This is the first one Paimon's ever caught. Well, looks like you got a real knack for this. You'll be a fellow beetle fighting expert in no time. I mean, not as good as me, but, <laughs> but still. Oh, so overall, not that good then. Uh, anyway, great. With both your beetle and mine, I can tell this will finally be the one. This time, I'm gonna win for sure. Well, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's just life, man. There are so many people in this world who are talented, uh, passionate, but it's no guarantee that things will go their way. So many unrelated things have to come together at once in just the right way to make victory happen. Uh, there's this word that really sums it up nicely, actually. It's, a uh, coincidence. As in pure luck? Huh. Guess it makes no difference whether we have Paimon's beetle or not, then. Might as well just... Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's, let's not do anything rash here, you know? I think both of these fine beetles have a shot at winning. Let's just hang on to them and give them both a try. A true warrior never leaves a good beetle behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, time to head back and get this show started. Man, I am psyched for this. Woo, let's go! Finally! You're back! Can we start our beetle fight now? Yeah, sure thing, buddy. But you better watch out. I brought a real winner back this time. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not scared of your beetle. Go, go, Stripey Ghost! I've got this fight in the bag. Let's go, Nimble Ninja! Huh? When did you come up with that name? Come on, you can take him, little guy! Right, finish it. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, my little nimble ninja. Ha! Looks like I win again. Dang it. Oh, it's my seventh loss in a row. Even Uncle Ito can't beat him. I won't forget this. I'll beat you next time, I swear! All right, Paimon, you're up. Time to give Crimson Cyclone a shot. Maybe it'll end this losing streak of mine. All right, go get him, Crimson Cyclone! Whoa, that one looks ultra strong. But it's still no match for you, Stripey. <laughs> All right, little guy. Use your super pilot tornado. No, I can't believe it. I lost. Yay! We won! Ha! Paimon knew Crimson Cyclone would be the best. Boy, did that one put up a fight! Woo! It wiped the floor with Stripey Ghost. <laughs> I know a real beetle trainer when I see one. Way to kick some beetle butt, partner. <laughs> see? Paimon's got real talent. Of course, Crimson Cyclone has to take some of the credit, too. Oh, right. Yeah, now that the beetle fighting's over and all. Mm hmm? This is 
for you, Daisuke. Huh? For me? You're really giving it to me? Go ahead, take it, Daisuke. When we finally get back to the city, you can show it off to all your friends. But... will we ever be able to go back? Of course we will. Trust me. I never go back on my word. Anyway, I got some things I gotta discuss with my friends here. Uh, go play with Granny for a while, would ya? <laughs> There's a good boy. Good. The kid doesn't suspect a thing. You're from the Tinryo Commission, aren't you? I bet you're here to capture Uncle Ito. Huh? Hey, didn't I tell ya? They're my friends. Uh, in fact, they're, they're in the gang. <laughs> We're practically family. That's not true. I already know everyone in your little gang, but I've never seen these two before. Uncle Ito didn't do anything wrong. Don't take him away. And not only did he not do anything wrong, he also saved my life. He's not a bad guy. Hey, uh, some things we don't tell to outsiders, remember? Uh, how should I explain? I'm a real lousy liar. Ito, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say. Uh, don't worry about us. <sighs> I guess. Thanks, Granny. Seems I can't hide it anymore. Come with me. I'll explain everything. I'll be honest with you. This thing the Tenryo Commission is investigating, with someone going around taking people and their possessions, it wasn't me. Any of it. I have my own reasons for lying about it, and I really didn't want to get innocent people caught up in this while I'm still trying to solve the real problem here. And the same as you. I just want to avoid conflict at all costs. But it's just not worth it if someone gets hurt. So why in the world would you say that you're the culprit? <sighs> Maybe you don't know because you're outlanders, but it all started a long, long time ago with the story of the Crimson Oni and the Blue Oni. Hold on a second. If you're talking about that fairy tale, we've heard that one already. Oh, so you already know. Well, that makes things a whole lot easier. So, is the story from the fairy tale really true? Everything about the fate of the Oni is true. The Blue Oni chose exile and the Crimson Oni stayed behind. But the other details uh, aren't historically accurate. Fairy tales are nice stories, but there's something they leave out. It's a little thing called the cold, hard truth. The Inazuma of long ago was a dangerous place. If you wanted the Raiden Shogun's protection, you had to have a good relationship with the humans. The Oni are a proud kind, so it wasn't easy for them to ask others for acceptance. Over time, the Oni eventually split into two factions. The Crimson Oni were friendly with the humans, but the Blue Oni? They were more stubborn and insisted on keeping to their own. Paimon thought you were two different species. So really, you're all one family? Yep, that's right. There's no real difference between us. We just paint our horns different colors to show which side we belong to. Because humans were still wary of Oni at the time. The Crimson Oni always hoped to find a way to live in peace with the humans, but the Blue Oni kept clashing with them. Humans didn't see a difference between Crimson and Blue Oni. All they knew was that Oni were hard to get along with. If things were to continue that way, the Oni were never going to get along with humans. And so, the most revered leaders of the Crimson and Blue Oni decided to resolve it once and for all. Over drinks, they swore an oath. The Blue Oni would play the role of Evil Oni to help the Crimson Oni integrate into human society. But the Blue Oni's leader gave two conditions. Huh? What were they? First, the Oni must abandon any prejudice they held against humanity. Every Oni was to accept humans in their heart before the humans accepted them. Oni were not to use their strength to mistreat humans, but were also not to stand for mistreatment against themselves. Second, the Crimson Oni were to integrate with human society, but not by trying to please the humans. The Oni were to embrace their own honest characters, their surging tempers, and their awesome strength to win respect from the humans. In other words, they were to carry on the Oni bloodline while also protecting our Oni pride. After choosing exile, the number of blue Oni began to dwindle, until eventually, they disappeared altogether. 
Since I first heard the story of the blue and crimson oni as a kid, oh, I've heard it countless times in my life. Not once did I ever imagine that the blue oni clan had actually survived. So you're saying the real culprit was a descendant of the blue oni? That's right. Most people don't pay attention to the color of an oni's horns. They probably don't even know that blue oni exist. But nothing gets by the Arataki gang. At the scene of the crime, they saw an oni with different color horns than mine. Still, it'd be strange if the culprit really was a descendant of the blue oni. I can't bring myself to accept it. Exactly. They would give up their life before abandoning their pride. I've always respected the Blue Oni for the sacrifice they made. And I know the aspirations my ancestors had for the future of all Oni. Our pride does not allow for any wrongdoing. You don't steal from other people. You don't harm other people, period. My guess is that the Blue Oni was tricked or forced into it somehow. But uh, I don't have any evidence. That's right. If I didn't step in, the Tenryo Commission would have definitely caught them by now. But what does Daisuke have to do with any of this? He said that you saved him so he knows your story, right? He was the one I managed to save from the Ronin after I sent them running from the scene. He was off playing somewhere when they came by and ransacked his house. By the time he came back, his parents had been taken. The whole reason I'm in this is to help this kid find his mom and dad again. I never wanted to tell you any of this. <laughs> my original plan was to knock you both out and take my family to hide somewhere else. There's more to this than just one blue oni. There's a dangerous group behind everything that's been going on. I didn't want to get anyone else caught up in this mess. That's everything. The whole story. If you don't believe me and want to drag me back to Inazuma City, then I'm going to fight you with all I've got. But if you're willing to believe me, then please, give me a little time. Once I find the blue oni, I'll turn the both of us in. Yep, Paimon too! Just treat it like we're here to keep an eye on you. So, you... <laughs> All right. I knew you'd be reasonable. I, <laughs> I knew it. I was thinking right from the start, these two fine folks, they're just out here in the pursuit of truth and justice, man. <laughs> we are gonna get along just great. Well, I should tell you, though, things could get a little dangerous, so, uh, be ready for anything. <laughs> uh, don't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> don't worry about us. We're seasoned adventurers! All right, then our first job is to investigate where this blue oni is hiding out. There's a victim of his that saw him up close, currently taking refuge at Songonomiya's camp. I figure we can start by talking to him. <laughs> must be Masato. Uh, an Oni? Oh no, not another one! Oh, uh, yeah. Not the one that robbed you, though. So, uh, <laughs> chill. I contacted you before, remember? I need your help. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. I'm still a bit on edge after the incident. <clears throat> so anyway, here's what happened. I was just out transporting some goods when a group of Ronin suddenly attacked me. It's not the first time that's happened to me. Usually, you just hand over some Mora, and they'll leave you alone. At least you don't lose your goods that way. But this time was different. They weren't willing to talk things over. Instead, they took my things and they started coming for me! Huh? That's totally uncalled for! I got down on my knees and begged. Said I had a family to care for, and that my business is our only livelihood! Then I saw that there was an Oni among the group. I thought he was going to be the one to finish me off. But, instead, he stopped the others and told them to let me go. Yeah, that got them all arguing with each other. His cohort said that I was sure to retaliate if they released me. But the young Oni was insistent that they shouldn't lay a finger on me. Things got real heated. I thought they were gonna come to blows. 
Luckily, they let me escape with my life in the end. And I scrambled to get myself here, where I'd be safe. <sighs> I never want to set foot outside of here again! So he'll steal, but he won't harm people. <laughs> Seems he has some sort of standards. Did he say why they were robbing you? Surely it was Mora, right? What else could they have wanted with me? I mean, I can't say for sure, it's not like I asked. But what I did hear them say was, the goods are worth more than the merchant's life. Or something like that. Ugh, that idiot Oni. Do you have any idea where they went after they robbed you? I have no clue. But I think they're pretty active in the Tatarasuna area. You aren't gonna go after them, are you? Seriously, I'd advise against it. There are too many of them and they're all heavily armed. Ah, don't worry. It's just a bunch of no-name scumbags. I got a whole laundry list of scores to settle with them. If these two islands are where they tend to hang around, we're sure to run into them at Nazuchi Beach sooner or later. They gotta pass through here sometime. Let's just hang tight for a while. If I'm not mistaken, they'll be showing up any time now. Yeah, things might get a little rough, so we better be prepared. Oh, here they come! Yeah, there they are. And one of them has horns. All right, it's go time. Let's get them! Let's, let's get to it. Looks like you fellas aren't going down without a fight. Fine by me. Let's fight first, talk later. <laughs> Bam! Ha! There's more! Catch me! Who wants some of this? There's more! Let's roll! Fairy! Don't even think about running. It's me, Arataki Ito, descendant of the Crimson Oni. <laughs> I know who you are. From the day we are born, every blue Oni knows their purpose. We all know our fate is one of self-sacrifice. But what about the Crimson Oni, hmm? You don't know anything about us. Not our miserable history, or any of our names. Mine's Takuya, by the way. But you don't even care, do you? Because those who get sacrificed should be forgotten, right? No, you're wrong. I never knew the Blue Oni had survived to this day, and the moment I found out, I was determined that I would find you. Since you remember the pact between our two factions, I assume you also remember the pride we share as Oni. So my question is, how could a proud Oni like yourself go and abuse the weak and plunder the innocent? Why break the oath that our kind swore all those years ago? <laughs> huh? What's so funny? <sighs> Who are you to talk about pride and oaths with me? The Blue Oni gave up everything, just so the Crimson Oni could live peacefully in human society. But let me ask you, Arataki Ito, what exactly do you contribute to human society? 
You're a blundering fool who can't hold down a real job, a laughing stock of the town, and worse still, you let them get your vision during the vision hunt decree. Protecting the Oni pride? Huh. You wouldn't know how if you tried. You're a disgrace to the Oni kind. Hey, come on. None of that stuff's a big deal. I, I mean, you're, you're really hanging me out to dry here, man. Since when do you care what other people think? You just do whatever you want. It's not like anyone can stop you. But do you have any idea of the kind of life my kin and I have lived while you've been hanging around in human society? We were cut off from the rest of the world. We severed all contact with it. And since then, we've had no place to live, no stable source of food, no clothing, no medicine, nothing. Besides the oath we swore to uphold in our so-called Oni pride, we had nothing. So that's why you joined a band of thieves? That's right. Why should I accept that life? Is holding fast to a worthless oath supposed to help me provide for my family and friends? I've abandoned our Oni pride. It's meaningless. I want to live. I've given everything that I've stolen from humans to my community. What I've taken will at least keep them from starving and ease their pain. That's what matters most to me. Yeah! And besides, the Blue Oni sacrificed themselves so that Oni could be accepted as part of human society. If people see Oni causing trouble again, then that'll defeat the whole purpose of the sacrifice you made! <laughs> you make a good point. But Arataki Ito's the one who needs to get that into his thick skull. The Blue Oni are the bad guys, so we're expected to do bad things. Our actions won't tarnish the reputation of the Crimson Oni. Unless, of course, this bonehead decides it'd be a great idea to take all the blame for himself, completely destroying the trust between humans and the Crimson Oni in the process. He's the one that wasted the sacrifice we made. Huh? Well, I only had to do that because of you! I couldn't just stand back and let the Tenryo Commission drag you away. You should get your priorities straight. The Blue Oni are history, all right? Forget about us. The Crimson Oni are the ones who must live on. Why couldn't you have just stayed out of this? There they are! Seize them! Oh no! It's the Tenryo Commission! <sighs> Forget it. This was a waste of time anyway. Look, I don't expect you to understand me. But you could at least take a look in the mirror sometime. Hey! Hey! Well, he got away! Uh-oh! We need to get out of here, too! <clears throat> we can't get caught here. Looks like I'm up to bat. Just wait here, and we'll escape together when the time's right. Whatever you do, don't attack any of the Tenryo Commission, or they'll be after you, too. Who goes there? Soldiers, quick! Yeah! <laughs> Atta boy! Uh, yeah! Uh, yeah! Uh, uh, yeah! I must yeah! draw. Get them! Uh, yeah! Come on, men! He won't get away this time. Just give yourself up, our Takito. came out in force today. I'm kind of flattered the Tenryo Commission sent so many. 
but I still haven't completely recovered from the bean attack earlier. I'm starting to lose my edge here. No, no way. All that would do is send them after our blue oni friend instead. But I have to settle things with him first, man to man. Then what should we do? The Tenryo Commission's about to arrest you! Uh, no choice but to keep kicking some Tenryo butt! Hey boss! Thought you'd have all the fun without us? Granny Oni sent us. We're here to lend a hand. Maybe we can't take him, but we can sure slow him down. Now's your chance! Go! Hey, I told you to stay out of this one. Well, we're in it now. Come on, there's no time! Go! Do what you gotta do, boss! <laughs> All right, then. Watch yourselves. Soon as I'm done, I'm coming back for you. Come on, you two. Time to roll! Don't let them get away! After them! Hey, you guys want some of this? There's plenty to go around. Run for it, boss! As boss of the Arataki gang, getting rescued by my own boys feels... pretty humiliating. I promise to never let you down, boys. Alright, we've got some footprints to follow. Let's find Takuya. It was real touching and all what they did, but those few guys weren't much of a gang. Hey, it takes Mora to run a gang, okay? They're all I've got for now. Huh. Is it just me, or are there more and more footprints here? At least, huh, a wrecked cart and some goods. Look alive, we've got company. They definitely don't want us going any further. Let's see what's waiting for us up ahead. Huh. Besides the footprints, there are other signs of life here too. Must be plenty going on around here. Let's investigate. They couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. Thin air. <laughs> Uh, unless they're all ninjas or something. Entrance. Yes! All right. I think we just found their hideout. This is gonna be where they keep all the people they took. Paimon thinks Taki is probably in there as well. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, fire away? <laughs> of course I did. Come on, I'm not that dumb. But, it takes a world-class blockhead like Takuya to think his ideas are actually gonna work. So I'm here to save him no matter what. Huh? What were you two talking about? Are you keeping Paimon in the dark again? <laughs> uh, let's go. by less than legitimate means, no doubt. And all the more reason we gotta plan to this. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Ammo. That'll be what this mechanism's for. 
What did I tell you? Just trust my instincts. Catch me! Catch me! Day. <laughs> Bam! Cha! Uh, How's this? No rest for the wicked. Let the show begin. Dumpy Dumpy Dumpy! Uh, to the fairy! It's showtime! Uh, How's this? Uh, 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 finally, I... Uh, to the uh, fairy! Uh, Catch me!
catch me. on to them for leverage. All right, let's get him out of here. I don't even know if he was taken here or not. But, but... Oh, my little Daisuke! Oh, you must be Daisuke's parents! Yes, that's right! Have you seen him? Where is he? Is he alright? Don't worry, he's safe and sound. Someone's looking after him now on Yashiori Island. I can show you where on the map. He's been worried about you. I bet he'll be relieved to see you. You were the one who saved him? Oh, thank you, thank you! <laughs> no, no, please, no. No need to thank me. It's, it's my pleasure, really. It's just who I am. It's what I do. Before you go calling me a hero, let me ask you this. Wouldn't any other self-respecting guy who saw another person in danger have done the exact same thing? Really? Just one little compliment and it goes straight to his head. These vagrants are insatiable. They'll do anything for money. No one dares stand up to them for fear of what they might do. Well, would they really do anything drastic? Um, no, actually, because one of the guys, the one with oni horns on his head, has always shielded us so far. Oh, in fact, his horns look just like the ones this guy has. At night, he would secretly bring us food and water. I don't understand what he was trying to do. Are you a friend of his? Or perhaps a relative? Uh, relative, I guess. Oh, maybe there's something secretly troubling him. He seemed different from the rest of the gang. They seem like heartless crooks, but I'd say he comes across more like a confused child who made some poor choices. Uh, let me put it this way. There are a few things he needs to straighten out in his head, and I'm here to point him in the right direction. I'm glad to hear that. He's lucky to have family like you. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll be in my trusty hands. I'll help him see the light. Anyway, you should scram. It's still not safe here. Yes, thanks again. You've rescued our entire family. We are indebted to you. Huh. A child that made some poor choices. Anyway, let's get going, while we still have time. me.
can't catch me. This is the place. The jig's up. Surrender while you can. secret. A long time ago, I picked up this rare paper charm. It's very precious to me. What makes it so special is that if you tear one piece, the other piece starts tearing too. Uh, Newsflash, don't care about your cute little origami obsession. You better stay where you are and let me finish. Aren't you curious what the other piece is used for? I'll tell you. It's now the critical component of a mechanism, and when it gets torn, this place goes up in smoke! Yeah, the whole hideout is rigged with explosives and ready to blow! What? You're gonna blow this whole place up? Oh, don't worry about me. I made sure that I've got an escape route. The rest of you, though, you're gonna be buried deep among the rubble. You've had your fun. Now it's goodbye. <laughs> Oh, uh, my paper charm. Where's my paper charm? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for this? Yes, that's. It. But when did you? I snatched it earlier to stop you from doing anything hasty. Why you? And now you're going to betray me? You're one to talk. What about burying everyone here? If you ask me, that sounds like you've already betrayed our agreement. No. Uh, just give it here. You done talking now? Huh? You sure? Great. Cause I'm done listening! Yeah. <sighs> Great work, Takuya. You arrived in the nick of time. Stay away from me! Huh? I said stay away, or I'll tear the paper charm! Hey, oh, okay, okay, uh, fine. Just calm down. What are you doing? Just because I won't let him blow this place to bits doesn't mean that I won't do it myself. Unless you want to get buried, you should leave this place now. Take everyone here and get out! <laughs> you won't go through with it. If you were that cruel, then why bother protecting every person you've come across, huh? I'm not here to reason with you. Go! Just get out of here! This sacrifice is mine to make. Mine alone! Why couldn't you just stay out of it? No one needs to sacrifice themselves. All right, then you tell me. What am I supposed to do? I've tarnished our Oni pride and abandoned our ancestors' oath. Only sacrifice can restore my pride now. I chose this path so I could provide for my fellow Oni. I was ready to die from the very beginning. This is between us blue Oni. But you... If it wasn't for you, everything would have worked out perfectly. They're here! We won't let them slip away this time. Uh-oh! There's nowhere else to run! Hey, Tenryo Commission! I'm the one you're looking for! I did it! I'm behind everything! Arataki Ito is innocent! You're the ones in charge of detaining criminals in human society, right? I'm sure you can tell who the criminal is here. Huh? It's like he's trying to reenact the fairy tale! Sacrificing himself for the Crimson Oni! Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's me you've been looking for, and here I am! How are you ever gonna report back without capturing me? <sighs> Stop fooling around, Ito! Listen, Takuya. Sacrificing yourself won't solve anything. 
Your sacrifice can't protect me or your fellow Oni, and giving up your life isn't gonna make theirs any longer. Sacrificing yourself is one way to escape your fate, but the only one you'll be setting free is yourself. Listen to me. You want to be the tough guy, huh? Well, this is the coward's way out. Don't let your sacrifice stain our Oni pride. <sighs> the Blue Oni have been scraping the bottom of the barrel all these years, so let's give them a new beginning. We've made mistakes, but we can make up for them. Fate hasn't been kind to the Oni? Well, then let's tear it up and start over. But before any of that can happen, you need to get yourself behind me and forget about all that self-sacrifice stuff. Now let's go. But we're not done talking about this. Uh, Takuya! I'll take care of this. There are still people in danger. Go, help them! What? <laughs> hey, I got this. Come on! Forget about me! Just go! It's what I deserve! Ah, oh, shut up, would ya? gonna hurt tomorrow. Ugh. What's up with the looks on your faces? I said we'd be okay, didn't I? I'm sure I'd be looking a whole lot sharper right now if it wasn't for that brutal bean attack of yours earlier. Why? Why would you do this for me? I'm the guilty one here. I don't deserve this. Because we're Oni, that's why. We share the same blood, brother. Our parents and their parents before them never taught us that it was okay to abandon family in need. I just wish you'd come to find me sooner. If you knew about me all along, then you should have come and asked me for help. I never would have dreamed of turning you away. The Blue Oni disappeared so that they wouldn't bring trouble to the Crimson Oni. If I came to you for help, wouldn't that just undo everything the Blue Oni have done? Not to me. I've always respected the Blue Oni for their sacrifice. Nothing they did was in vain. It's only because of them that we have survived to see today, and built a world where Oni and humans can live side by side. Honestly, everything that I have now, I owe to the Blue Oni. And let me tell you, the Inazuma of today wouldn't see you as a villain just because of the color of your horns. You say all that, but... In spite of everything, you're barely getting by. <laughs> That's just how I roll, man. You remember the pack, don't you? We're not supposed to suck up to the humans. We're supposed to earn their respect. Every member of the Arataki gangs had a tough time trying to fit in. Take Akira, for example. He snores like you wouldn't believe. Or Genta. He's got a serious temper problem. And Mamoru? Well, he's colorblind. Even Granny Oni. She got that name for taking me in as a kid. We're all rejects and outcasts in some way, but we don't care. You want to talk about pride? Well, in our gang, we're proud to welcome anyone who's been through adversity with open arms. But... I... Ah, don't worry. The Arataki gang's already a bunch of misfits. You really think you could cramp our style? We've dealt with the Kairagi and the people they took captive. I assume the two of you are finished talking. Takia, based on the findings of our investigation, 
I hereby announce that you are officially under arrest for forceful seizure of people and property. Please do not attempt to resist. All stolen articles will be reclaimed. That means we'll be seizing all the goods you passed on to your kin. No, please don't. Without those goods, they'll... It's all right, Takuya. Those goods never belong to us anyway. Don't worry, I'll help take care of your kin. Now that I know the situation, I'll personally make sure they never suffer again. Might want to put your grand plans on hold there. You're under arrest too, for numerous assaults on the Tenryo Commission officers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I forgot about that. But no worries, I'll put my gang on the case. My boys will take good care of the Blue Oni. Yeah, we've already arrested them too. Oh, right, yeah, uh... uh... <sighs> That's what they get for resisting the Tenryo Commission. Yeah, I guess it's up to you then, Traveler. Could you be a pal and tell Granny Oni about the Blue Oni situation? Yeah, I know the drill. This isn't my first time. <sighs> and it probably won't be my last. As for you two, lending them your aid when you knew full well they were in the wrong means that the culpability extends to you too. But, given your unique circumstances, and in light of the complexity of this case, we won't press charges this time. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. Hey, wait! Our unique circumstances? Are these guys like a, a, a big deal or something? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Because I was going to say, you know, like, I, I'm kind of a big deal myself, <laughs> you know? Yeah, all right, uh, see you next time. Whenever that'll be. Yes, that does sound like my Ito. So, did they take Uncle Ito away? Yes, they did. But don't be too upset, Daisuke. We will have the chance to see him again. He and his gang may have acted recklessly, but the fact remains that he still helped us. Yeah, I knew it! Uncle Ito helped us, and he's awesome! Now, don't get any ideas, Daisuke. Ito is a far cry from awesome. He still caused a lot of trouble for a lot of people. If you ask me, I'd say he's like one of those little Oni Kabuto you kids are playing with all the time. Though he looks fierce on the outside, he has a kind heart. He's not a delinquent, but he'll never back down from a fight. Uh, I don't really get it, but it sounds like a compliment. I can't wait for my next beetle fight with Uncle Ito! Thank you, Granny, for taking care of our little boy. I hope that Ito and his friends will be released as quickly as possible. Yes, you needn't worry. The officials in the Tenryo Commission will certainly exercise sound judgment. It's time we started heading back. We'll be sure to visit again soon. Ah, I'm glad that everything was resolved in the end. Things were looking quite dire, but now the future looks bright. Wonderful, wonderful. As for the Blue Oni, just leave them to me. If there's one thing an old granny like myself can do, it's caring for others. Do you need our help? <laughs> no, no. Go on ahead. I'm sure you have other adventures beckoning. Besides, once Ito is released, he'll be here to help me. Oh, yes. And you know what? I think that's what makes him adorable. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> he does whatever he puts his mind to. He's sincere, brave, and determined. Back when I took him in, 
Everyone thought I was most unusual indeed. They started calling me Granny Oni, but I've never been ashamed of this name. On the contrary, I'm quite proud of it. Because Ito is my pride and joy. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni wanted to be friends with the humans, so the blue oni played the role of the naughty kid. And then he left. After a long time, the crimson oni was living happily with the humans, but in his heart, he wanted to bring the blue oni back home. The crimson oni didn't know where to find the blue oni. His search took him up the highest mountains and across the widest rivers. He found many traces of the blue oni, but the more he found, the clearer it became. The blue oni was hiding on purpose. So just as the blue oni had once done, the crimson oni left him a letter. Dear Al, I've made lots of human friends now, and I want to have a big party for everyone. I want all my friends to be there. That means you too, Al. If you don't want to meet me, you can just watch from a distance. The blue oni snuck back to the village and hid in the shadows. He saw the great feast and roaring fire and longed to join in. But though his stomach rumbled, the blue oni remembered the oath of old and kept his distance. Suddenly, he jumped. The crimson oni was right behind him. <laughs> hey, you're finally back. Come on, I'll introduce you. It's time everyone met my best friend.